Gemini, hello there, my beautiful friends. We're going to do your general tarot reading for late July 2024. Thank you so much for joining me today. You know I appreciate each and every single one of you. So let's get right down to business as always and start you off with an oracle card here just so we can dip our toes in the energy and see what's happening for the lovely Gemini Collective. Hope you're all doing fabulous and fantastic, my friends. Let's get it going here. My guides and spirit team, talk to me. What do we have for the Gemini Collective in late July, what energies, messages, insights can we pull for our good friends? And yeah, we're just going to take a real quick look at this first card. Then we'll get into the full reading itself. At the very end, I'll pull you a bonus card from the Shadowland Tarot. Just to see what might be in the shadows or what shadow work you can lean in on, which is always interesting. But let's get it going here. Let's rock and see what we got for Gemini. Please and thank you. Let's get this first card out. What's going on for my good friends here? Okay. Oh, we have Ariel showing up for you, my friends. And I always like this card. It is a little bit daydreamy, but it is also a future focus. There's a lot of good energy attached to this. Some nice silver linings that we're really going to take a look at. But before we fully dive into there, if you're new here, I'll be speaking about the July subscriber surprise towards the end. So you might want to check that out. And also, if you could kindly illuminate that like button by tapping it right on its third eye you know i'd greatly appreciate it but enough of the promo into the reading let's talk a little bit more about this card in depth so if you look at the imagery here we have our good friend ariel and i love this image because to me it's aesthetically beautiful notice that she's half in the water the other half of her has the head in the clouds so we do get this like imaginative daydreamy energy connected to here and i'm sure everyone's seen the little mermaid a time or ten right so we know what that's about there is a big future focus here where although there's a lot of good stuff around there's someplace else where ariel would rather be okay so for a lot of gemini's you might just have a big future focus like what's coming down the line it doesn't feel super spontaneous it could also be a little strategic too whenever i see this card but the fact that she does have her head in the clouds that's just something to think about uh, this week, it might just be up in the head a little more than normal, or you could have some really great imaginative, creative ideas when this is in the mix. So whenever I get that imagination type of energy, I always say anything artistic, anything creative, where you're letting that energy out and bringing something into the physical world, physical world is a beautiful thing. But aside from that, a lot of you just yeah, look, look down the line, look what's coming up. We're just going to leave her there for now. Let's get into tarot. And yeah, I always say the first card here doesn't make or break the reading. It's just a little footnote. Let's get you three cards in the upright. Then we'll get into that intuitive juiciness. Shuffle it up one time here for the lovely Geminis. Please, my guides, talk to me. What do we got for my good friends? Please and thank you. And yeah, while we get this shuffled up and ready to go, let's talk about last week's reading, my friends. It was titled A Big Return. And a, a vibe I was picking up mostly last week is for a lot of Gemini's, things could be revisiting. So whether it's individuals, whether it's situations, whether it's behavioral patterns, I felt like a lot of things could reemerge in that time. And that could still bleed over for the coming days and weeks. So keep that in mind. Things could still be returning in this time frame. So let's see what shows up this week. As you know, energy is very fluid. It's never set in stone. So only take this how it hits for you because we could be seeing your vibe or someone that you're linked to. Let's get it going. Three cards here for the Geminis. Guides and spirit team, what's happening? What do we got for the Geminis? Here we go. Thank you. Okay, two of swords, a little bit of mystery. That's also a headspace type of energy as well. But there could be something a little obscure. There could be a little bit of unknown, unseen type of energy here. When we have the two of swords, we'll talk about it in a moment. Let's get one more. Two more, actually. What do we have for Geminis? Deck is being very particular, and for those of you that are new here, I only read jumpers. That's why I'm doing these little shuffles. There we go. Thank you. Okay, so we do have the Ten of Pentacles. This could bode very well, and one of your cards is showing up here as well, my good friends. We have the Lovers right here on the back end. Beautiful. So, so far, I'm getting a pretty nice energy off this, but you know how readings could go could go any which way but let's go through i'll give you some of the classical meanings and archetypes and we'll get into that juicy intuitive stuff so at first look first glance i do see a lot of elemental mixture that you should be pretty comfortable with on the extreme ends we have air okay so air energy is all about the mind thought process but also communication so we could be seeing conversation of some sort nice earthy energy grounding down the middle and the one thing i will say although all cards have positive and challenge attached there's two very positive leaning cards here 
on the top row for you. So I'm intrigued to see how this all plays out. So let's go through bit by bit and really start to build this out. Position number one, we have the two of swords and we see this little individual there with the two swords crossed. And in divination and in tarot, twos represent uh, decisions, being at a crossroads. Uh, it could represent partnerships. Generally, this is a card of harmony. But when we see the two of swords, whether it's somebody thinking something over, trying to decide on something, trying to strategize, that's possible. This card can sometimes in its classical form represent confusion or indecisiveness or unknowns. The fact that this person is blindfolded, hoodwinked, there's, it's at nighttime, there's a moon. It does indicate some sort of mystery, and I do say that this is my second biggest card of mystery within the deck, so it could be surprising things, unexpected things. Now, luckily, we do have some cards that lean positive coming up next to it, so there might be a good result coming up for a lot of you. It all really depends, unless this is somebody trying to say, all right, well, I just I want the best possible outcome in regards to something, but we'll talk about that more because I feel like that's setting up the energy for us to move forward. Moving to the center, we have the Ten of Pentacles, one of the best cards in the whole entire deck, and I love whenever it shows up. Now, all tens in tarot represent the close of a journey, and this is one of the happy ones. I often say this is level-up type of energy. Now, Pentacle energy does link into work, career, monetary situations, business, things along those lines. This one in particular, the Ten of Pentacles, could represent the home and family and property as well. So I like to see it here because it's very sturdy, very stable. Okay, it could talk about uh, routine, like someone's routine as well. So this could be really nice. But to me, Ten of Pentacles straight up is, you know, win victory type of energy or something going your way or something leveling up. So we'll want to dig into this further. Now, the challenging aspects of the Ten of Pentacles, since it is so earth heavy, sometimes it could represent something that's a little grounded something that might not be moving to your liking, something that could just feel stubborn or stale, possibly. So we'll see what's up with it. I'm not leaning to the challenging aspect just yet. I do feel like it's pretty positive. Now, moving to the very back end, we have what can be a very important card in this spread, the Lovers. Now, if you don't watch Tarot, you should know that this is the card in the deck that represents Gemini. So this is a card of the self. If you're not a cross-watcher and you're watching this for your own zodiacal placements, this could tell us a lot of things. In my simplistic style, it could tell us something that's coming towards you, a way you might be feeling. For some of you, self-confidence could really be at play when your card, your power card is here. And I do like it. Aside from those things, this card could also represent decisions, choices, and being at a crossroads. It's a big card of partnerships, soul bonds, soul ties. Not always romantic. It doesn't always represent a lover, actually. Sometimes it could be a really, really good friend or it could represent a very close family member. Someone that you have a very strong emotional tie to. Now, if partnerships are not very important for you in this time and right now, the lovers has the Archangel Raphael on it. So this could represent healing of some sort. So either way you cut it, this is a pretty smooth energy. And it's easy flowing, easy going, and I like it. Now, the challenging aspect of the lovers could just easily represent issues and tension and all the things that I already brought up. But I want to dive deeper on all the Gemini. Let's jump in and clarify. Okay, let's get a good shuffle here for my Gemini friends, please. What do we got? And yes, this is where I go intuitive with message, which means I just tell you how it feels to me. So feel free to do further research or rely on your base knowledge of tarot, because as you know, every single reading is about the reader's interpretation, and I'm just giving you mine. Let's go in on that two of swords. And yes, if you're a reader yourself, please feel free to play along. That's why the box is here. If you're feeling any messages you want to give to Gemini, you could drop it in the comments. I don't mind at all. All right, two of swords time. All right, so we do have the Empress in reverse. Now, for a lot of you, this could be a situation that does change unexpectedly, okay, where it's like, okay, it was going it was going steady, straight, it was predictable. Now it's not, okay? And I'll explain to you all the reasons why. Now, that doesn't necessarily have to be a bad thing for a lot of you. If you've been in a situation that's been making you feel a little stuck or it's not moving, it's not working to how you want it to, this energy is freeing up. That's kind of what I'm picking up here in the front, and I'll explain why. Now, we do have... The beautiful goddess right here, the Empress, and she represents Venus energy, so she connects to Libra, she represents, she connects to Taurus as well, usually represents abundance and just like beautiful overflowing energy from the universe. Um, 
could be mother figures as well. But the fact that she's in reverse does tell me because she is a grounded energy as well, like very grounded, very earthy in a sense. So her in reverse underneath the two of swords is just something that flips quickly. Okay, so whether this is an unexpected change, whether it's an unexpected shift of a situation, I would say specifically if you're dealing with something that's been sticking for a long time or something that feels stuck, this is a very positive energy here on the front end. So I would say expect the unexpected in this time with this energy, and we'll see how it all plays out as we move further. Okay, so again, doesn't feel like a big warning here as of right now. I want to see how the rest of the reading plays out, then we'll read into it a little more. So let's go in on that Ten of Pentacles. Uh, yeah, to me, it's just something flipping quick, something changing or shifting really quick. So why do we have the Ten of Pentacles? Let's see what's up. Maybe this is a good one. Why is that Ten of Pentacles here for my lovely Gemini friends? Please and thank you. Okay, thank you. Five cups in reverse, much better, much improved. Again, I do feel for a lot of you, specifically in career and monetary things, if you've been having any tension there. And now we could be seeing like the different areas of life because this could be someone's like mind state, the way you're viewing something, the way you're viewing a situation. Now we're talking the material world on the back end could be partnerships, but we have the five of cups in reverse. This is really, really good. So again, we have this energy freeing up. That's kind of, that's the best way I can explain what I'm feeling here because I feel it in the front end. I'm feeling it here in the center as well. The five of cups is the river of tears and this underneath the 10 of pentacles in reverse here, that tells me that this is a big win, big victory type of energy. And we're seeing different areas of life starting to show up like Again, mind state, the monetary pa partnerships coming up as well. So I would say for a lot of Gemini's in this time, specifically anything that's been feeling stuck, I, I just keep getting urged to bring that up in these first two sections. Anything that you've either been stuck on or anything that's just sticky in its ways, whether it's a thought process or a situation is freeing up. So I see you coming out victorious or with a big win here. I really love this energy. Now in the upright, that would be a different story. Right? If we saw this in the upright under the Ten of Pentacles, then I'd be like, oh, watch out. This energy's looking rough. We might have a bit of a warning that something could go the other way. It might not go your way. In reverse tells me, okay, we're getting back on track now. It's like kind of giving me that vibe. Like, okay, now things are starting to progress. Now things starting to move along. So I feel really good, especially if you've been stuck with anything or on anything. So let's keep moving over to the lovers and see what that has to say. Again, this doesn't necessarily feel bad to me i like it again very positive and optimistic here on the front end so let's see why the lovers are here because that's that could be a big key to this whole thing so let's go in on the lovers and we'll do a quick little recap before we get into the shadow <clears throat> pardon me so why are the lovers here why are the lovers in the mix thank you lovely okay so i do feel for a lot of you in this time your energy your vitality um is being focused on here as well. So we have a lot of the internals, but with the seven of wands, that's determined. It's let's go. Uh, I do feel for a lot of you overcoming a hurdle, which fits in exactly to what we've been feeling like in the front end, like something coming unstuck. We're overcoming something, overcoming a hurdle. And let's talk about it a little further. Like, I love the determination I'm feeling here, Gemini. So whether this is just like a little shot in the arm from spirit saying like, you, you got it, you're good. It's starting to work or it's starting to move along. The seven of wands could sometimes represent problems or conflict, right? But to me, a big thing with this card is that determination. It doesn't matter. Me against the world, it doesn't matter. Trials and tribulations, doesn't matter. Something's going to pay off when I see this, especially under your card. So I do like it. Um, it's a dedicated type of energy as well. So I feel for a lot of you something paying off in a very big way, whether it's your patience, your hard work, your understanding, your empathy. I feel something paying off in a big way for you. Okay, And again, we are focusing on the internal energy. If any of you have been feeling a little down lately or if your energy has been feeling zapped, I feel, again, revitalized. That's the big thing I'm picking up from this, like energy coming free, stuck things becoming unstuck, energy revitalizing and rebuilding. So this is good. And again, I'm not going to say that every single reading in like recent weeks has been terrible. It's been a little back and forth, but I like this revitalized energy I'm picking up here. Again, we have wind-based energy all over the place. Let's go through and do a quick recap, then we'll get into the shadow card. 
because, yeah, it's nuanced, but I'm liking the direction the energy is heading for a lot of Geminis in this time. So position number one, we do have a bit of mystery. We have the two of swords with the empress in reverse. And I said to me, this feels like either an unexpected change or shift, something coming unstuck, like something that's been like a little clamped down, or if you feel like you've hit a plateau or hit a wall, this energy is finally coming unstuck. So it could be a situation that flips or changes real quick. We get a similar thing as we move to the center. We have the Ten of Pentacles with the Five of Cups in reverse. So I like this. Again, wind-based energy, victory-based energy, something coming unstuck. Now we're moving along. For a lot of you, there is a big focus in the center, at least, around anything regarding business, work, finance, which feels good, but it doesn't just have to be that. Because to me, the main vibe is that energy coming free. Moving to the back end, lots of win and victorious type of energy. On the back end, we do have the Lover's Year card with the Seven of Wands. Said for a lot of you, you might start feeling revitalized in this time, especially if your energy has been a little low. But overcoming something, overcoming a problem or a situation, when you combine that with all this energy on the back end of things coming free, I like this. Again, there's beautiful energy, or I at least like the way the energy is moving for you. If that's really not the case for what you're feeling right now, right this second, this could be spirit giving you a snapshot saying like Gemini, something is only temporary. You're going to get through this. You're going to get past this. So I like this energy. It's very reassuring. Please take a screenshot. Let's see what's in the shadows for you. So we're going to shuffle this up one time. What do we have in the shadows for the Gemini collective? Gods and spirit team. What is going on for my good friends? And yes, I always like to pull one shadow card at the very end just to see whether it's something within you or something you don't quite see. Shadow cards don't always have to be a challenge. They could be good too. So let's get you one. Oh, and yes, if you made it to this point in reading, please feel free to check out channel memberships. I'll put a link for it in the comments below. It's a beautiful way to support the channel and I have much love for all my channel members. Okay, get this shadow card out here. What's going on? Thank you. Nice and quick. The sun. So again, this ties in with the full reading itself. I like where we're going. I like where we're headed energetically at the very least because you have the most positive card in the whole entire tarot deck showing up as your shadow card. Now, this can have a little more depth, right? Because the sun illuminates things. The sun brings things to light, especially when we have mystery here on the front end of the spread. And now we're doing a shadow card and the sun comes out. So for a lot of Geminis, uh, you might be having realizations and dots are starting to connect or you're having aha moments where things finally start to make sense. And that could be good. But remember what the sun does as well. It's source energy. It brings us blessings and abundance, similar to like what we've been seeing within the reading itself. So this is that sun beginning to rise. I really like what I'm picking up in your reading as a whole. This is also Leo energy. We're currently in Leo season at the time of this reading. So that's also intriguing for a lot of you. Like this might not just be this week. This could be the energy that's moving forward throughout the whole zodiacal month. But again, the sun to me is the most positive card, very illuminating. And I feel like things are going to start making sense for a lot of you. So yeah, Gemini, that's what I have for you this week, my beautiful friends. Don't click away just yet, though. I'm going to give you the details about the July subscriber surprise. If you would like to book a personal reading with me, you can check out my digital calendar at my website, mastermetaphysics.com. The link is down below. But for the July subscriber surprise, giving away two copies of another one of my favorite decks, The Wizard's Tarot. Absolutely beautiful and works great. So if you'd like to get your name in for this, it's two simple things. As always, my friends, first, you must be subscribed. And second, since I have the travel bug lately, let me know down in the comments what is the most beautiful place you visited in person. You'll be entered to win, and at the end of the month, the winners will be announced in my community tab. As always, my friends, much love, and I'll see you soon.